So the first topic from November Environment section is that the National Commission for Scheduled Tribes has asked the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change to put Forest Conversation Rules 2022 on hold. Now, what are these Forest Conversation Rules? These Forest Conversation Rules 2022 were issued by the Union Ministry, that is Environment Ministry, under the Forest Conversation Act of 1980. Now, Forest Conversation Act prescribes the procedure to be followed when we want to divert any land, forest land, for uh, purposes such as road construction, highway development, railway lines, and mining. Now, the broad aim of Forest Conversation Act is to protect wildlife and to check state government's attempts to divert forest lands for commercial pro projects, and it wants to increase the area under forests. At the same time, there was a Forest Rights Act of 2006, which required the government to seek prior free and informed consent of forest dwellers before allowing any project on their traditional land. Now, Forest Conversation Rules 2022 has shifted the responsibility of the union government to take consent onto the state government. This new rule allows the union government to permit clearing of forests even before consulting the inhabitants, which was mandated by Forest Rights Act of 2006. Sorry. This new rule allows for the union government to permit clearing of forests before consulting an inhabitants, which was mandated by Forest Rights Act of 2006. Now, NCST's objection is that uh, it might be infringing upon the lands right of tribal people, which has been given under Forest Rights Act. And this new rule is to be put on hold. And instead, it has act that the government, the union government, focus on implementing the rules framed in 2017. Now let's move on to the second topic which is emissions gap report of 2022. The emissions gap report of 2022 which is released by UNEP. The objective of this report is to find the difference between the projected greenhouse gas emissions in 2030 and where they should be to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. Now this is the 13th edition in the annual series which means it is released every year. What are the key findings of the report? The report says that the world as whole is falling short of the goals which has been set forth in the Paris Agreement. Now there is no credible pathway currently in place so as to control global warming just under 1.5 degrees Celsius. The top seven emitters according to this report are China, European Union of 27 countries, India, Indonesia, Brazil, Russian Federation and United States of America. Also it points out that international transport accounts for 55% of the global greenhouse gas emissions in 2020. These seven countries emissions have rebounded in 2021 exceeding the pre-pandemic 2019 levels which means that these top seven emitters are now emitting more than what they were emitting just before the pandemic. It also says that G20 members are responsible for 75% of the greenhouse gas emissions. The report also points out that the average per capita greenhouse emission is 6.3 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent in 2020. Now the recommendations given by the emissions cap report of 2022 is that we need alternative technologies in the heavy industry. Also, we need to reverse the rise in the carbon intensity of global steel production. As we know that steel production is carbon intensive in nature. Now let's move on to the third topic which is adaptation gap report of UNEP in the year 2022. So this is the second report we are considering today. Now the UNEP has released the adaptation gap report of 2022. The title of the report is too little too slow. The key findings of the report is that climate change impact is increasing across the globe. If you want to have a bird's eye view of these impacts, the first impact they have mentioned is the multi-year drought in Horn of Africa. There is flooding in South Asia and there is heat waves and record breaking droughts across multiple regions of Northern Hemisphere. Now this is pointing towards mounting an ever increasing climate risk. The global effort in adaptation planning financing is incremental but it is failing to keep in pace with the increasing climate risk. It also says that only 33% of the 197 parties to UNFCC have incorporated quantified and time-bound targets for adaptation. These 33%, 90% have considered gender and disadvantaged group in their quantified and time-bound targets. Also, the international adaptation finance flow are 5 to 10 times slower than what is required, which is currently 29 billion in 2020, whereas the developing countries say that they need at least 160 to 340 billion per year by 
and 315 to 565 billion per year by 2050. So there is a huge gap uh, from for what is required and what is being financed. The recommendations given by the report are that we need to increase financing for adaptation. We need a new business model so as to turn adaptation priorities into investable projects. We also need availability of climate risk data and information so that we can plan. Port also asks for the implementation and operationalization of early warning systems against extreme weather events. So let's move on to a natural disaster every day in India, a CSE report. This report has been given by Center for Science and Environment, which is CSE. And it says that India saw natural disaster every day in the first nine months of 2022. Now, it says that extreme weather events were recorded on 242 of the 273 days from January 1st to September 30. Now, according to this report, the worst hit state is that of Madhya Pradesh, which was witnessing a extreme weather event every second day. Loss and damage, according to this report, is suffered highest in Himachal Pradesh, that is for the number of deaths, and according to the value lost, Assam is the worst suffering state and for loss and damage, the number of deaths has been highest in Himachal Pradesh, whereas Assam has reported the highest number of damaged house and animal deaths. Now, region-wise, Central and Northwest India reported the highest number of days with extreme weather events. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change definition of loss and damage it is negative effect of climate variability and climate change that people have not been able to cope with or adapt to. Now let's move on to the State of Cli Global Climate Report 2022. It has been issued by World Meteorological Organization that is WMO. The key findings of the report are that the global mean temperature worldwide in 2022 is estimated to be 1.15 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial level that is the average of temperatures between 1850 to 1900. It also says that it is difficult to meet the global climate, the goal of keeping warm, global warming within 1.5 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. Now, eight of the warmest years on record have been the preceding eight years, like the past eight years have been the warmest on record. It also says that global mean average temperature was 1.28 degree higher than the pre-industrial time in 2016, which was the warmest year. Impact of rise in temperature is that we are witnessing record-breaking rain in July and August. Example, we have the flooding in Pakistan. We are witnessing repeated heat waves in Europe. Example is that UK saw a new national record in July when the temperature topped more than 40 degrees Celsius for the first time. It also says that vulnerable population is most affected like it is life threatening to the poor and vulnerable population the sea level rise the rate of sea level rise it has risen by more by 10 mm since january 2020 and the past two and a half year alone account for the 10 percent rise since 1993 also the rate of sea level rise is has almost doubled since 1993 now let's see the e-waste management rules of 2022. It has been assured by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. The key, pro key provisions of the e-waste management rule of 2022 says that it is applicable to every manufacturer, producer, refurbisher, etc. of e-waste or electrical equipments. However, these rules do not apply to batteries, plastics and radioactive waste for we have other provisions of law. Now, it wants to reduce the hazard use of hazardous substances such as lead, mercury, cadmium. It also wants to recycle product and the responsibility is on the manufacturer to collect e-waste generated during manufacture. It wants to make the end product recyclable. It also wants that the components used in differ by different manufacturers are compatible with each other so as to reduce the quantity of e-waste generated. Now, there is a role for CPCB that is Central Pollution Control Board. It shall conduct random sampling and verify the compliance of reduction of hazardous substances provision. Now, import or placement in the market of new electrical and electronic equipment shall be permitted only after they are in compliant with the provisions laid down by the government. And manufacturer may have to will have to actually withdraw all the samples if they are not if they are found non-compliant. Now, let's move on to the next topic, which is Mangrove Alliance for Climate. India has recently joined the Mangrove Alliance for Climate 
launched during the COP27 in Egypt, that is Sharm El Sheikh. About the Mangrove Alliance for Climate, the basic objective is to educate and spread awareness on the role of ma mangroves in curbing global warming. So we want to spread awareness about the role of mangroves in climate change and how it can help us with global warming. Its members include UAE, Indonesia, India, Sri Lanka, Australia, Japan and Spain. UAE and Indonesia are the founding members. The alliance works on voluntary basis which means there are no checks to hold the members accountable and they want to share expertise researching, managing and protecting coastal areas. About the mangroves, now these grow along the coastline, they grow in swamps, they can survive extreme weathers, they require low oxygen level to survive and mangroves are distributed in the tropical and subtropical region that is from 30 degree north to 30 degree south. Mangroves are among the most carbon rich forests in the tropics. Mangrove forests act as natural barriers against rising tides and storms and every year they prevent property damages worth $65 billion. The UNESCO celebrates 26 July as International Day for Conservation of Mangrove Ecosystem. About the status of mangrove cover, India currently has a mangrove cover of around 4,992 square kilometers, which has increased since the past report of Indian State of Forest Report. The mangrove area in India has recorded an increase of 7.07% in 2021. Moderately dense mangrove forests have reduced. Very dense mangrove forest and open mangrove forest have marginally increased. West Bengal has the highest forest cover under mangroves among the nine states and three union territories. Infrastructure product, uh, projects shifting coastline, coast erosion and storms have resulted in a significant decrease in mangrove habitats. Also, according to the Global Mangrove Alliance 2022 report, between 2010 and 2020, 600 square kilometers of mangroves were lost, of which more than 62% was due to direct human impact. If we look at the mangroves present in India, the first one is in West Bengal, that is Sundarban. The second largest will be for the Gulf of Kutch, that is in Gujarat. Moving on, we have Mahanadi mangroves, then we have Godavari Krishna Delta mangroves, then we have Pichavaram Estuary mangroves in Tamil Nadu. Muthu pit mangroves in Tamil Nadu as well. Kerala has Cochin estuary. Karnataka and between the Karnataka Kerala border lies Konatpur Malap area. In Goa, we have Zuari estuary, which lies at the mouth of Zuari River. In Mumbai, we have Mumbai mangroves. Then we have Bhavnagar estuary, which is in Gujarat, and Gulf of Kutch mangroves in Gujarat. We also have mangroves in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. 